On the last video, we talked about rational equations and how to solve it. But what if the given is not an equation at all? How do we find the solutions? When I said that the given is not an equation at all, this means that in this video, we will be dealing with inequalities. Inequalities are relations which makes non-equal comparison between two mathematical expressions. These are often used to describe large sets of solutions and determining the effect of a certain possibility of a situation. One of it is rational inequality. From the name itself, it is an inequality made up of rational expressions. It will have letters and numbers just like on what rational equations have. Rational inequalities are perhaps used more often in real-life situations than equalities. For instance, it is being used on businesses to control inventory or plan production or even predicting sales and profits. Since the solution of inequalities is an interval, experts can apply safe numbers based on their applications. Before our lesson, look again on the objectives of this week and the content of this video. The best way on dealing with rational inequality is to always work with it on zero on one side. Always make sure that the rational expressions or fractions are combined into a single one before starting solving. If you are having trouble with simplifying rational expressions and combining fractions, you can always check back our lesson on week 2 lesson 1. Solving rational inequalities has three parts. First is simplifying. This step involves making one side as zero, combining fractions into a single rational expression, and factoring. Second is the table of sign, which will really consume your time on solving. And lastly is the decision rule which will be based on what you had collected on the table of signs. This section also includes the interval of your answer. To understand it more, let's have an example. Solve the inequality x squared plus 8x plus 12 over x squared plus 6x plus 8 greater than 0. The first part of solution is simplifying. Since the inequality already combined into a single fraction and also has its one side as 0, then the only thing left to do is to factor. So remember our factoring review. The numerator will be factored as x plus 2 and x plus 6 because 2 and 6 will have a product of 12 and a sum of 8. While the denominator has factors of x plus 2 and x plus 4 because 2 and 4 will have a product of 8 and a sum of 6. So, it is basically same on what we did last time on rational expression, but 
this time, do not cancel common factors because it will have a big impact later on our solution. After doing so, we shall now move on the next part which is the table of signs. In this step, you just need first to identify all the constants of our given factored form. So that's 6 and 4. Now, if there's same constants on numerator and denominator, specifically the common factor, just consider the denominator which is in our case is 2. Then change the signs of each constant. 6 to negative 6, 4 to negative 4, and 2 to negative 2. These new constants will now be called critical numbers. After that, set up now the table like this. On the top of the table, you will write your critical numbers. On the rows will be the expressions, the numerator, the denominator, and the answer which is composed of our given factored form. For your ease, make sure you highlighted which of the critical numbers came from the denominator. It is because denominators have a big role to be done in our final solution. Also, make sure your critical numbers were arranged in ascending order or from least to greatest. After constructing the table, we will now complete all the necessary cells of it. You will choose a number from each side of a critical number. You can always pick any number you want, but make sure it will not pass above or below the critical number given. Critical numbers are like boundaries of each column of the table. For choosing your number, just think of the number line in which the integers were arranged from left to right. So on left of negative 6, I can use negative 7. Always choose numbers that are correct and convenient for you on solving. Then, between negative 6 and negative 4, I chose negative 5. Between negative 4 and negative 2 is negative 3. Again, you can always choose any number. So, between negative 4 and negative 2, you can also use negative 2.5, negative 2.6, etc. But, negative 3 is just convenient to use. And, Past negative 2 to the right could be 1, 2, 3, 4, or simply 0. Now complete the table by evaluating each of the chosen number to the corresponding row of expression. So, we will use negative 7 first for the first expression x plus 2 x plus 6. Substitute, replace all x by negative 7, then negative 7 plus 2, and negative 7 plus 6. Simplify now the expression, and that's negative 5 and 1. Since we still have operation, just simplify up until we arrive on the final answer, which is positive. Five. Now you will just get the sign of the answer and put it on the table. Next, negative 5 will be used as same on what we did on negative 7. And here are my solutions.
now your turn. Pause the video and try to complete the table just like what we did on the first row. You will now try the second row and check if we will have the same answers. For the last row, which is the answer row, you will just divide each corresponding signs of each column to obtain the sign of the answer. Or you can always say that if there's same sign that is positive and different signs is negative. For the column of negative 7, that's positive and positive, same sign. Then the result is positive. For the column of negative 5, that's different signs, so the result will be negative. Same will be used for the column of negative 3 and 0. Now for the last part of the solution, decision rule, you will start by checking back the given. On our given, Look at the inequality symbol. It says greater than. So from our table, we will choose only the column with answers of positive. Those are negative 7, negative 3, and 0. Then, you will create a notation to describe the table. Start your notation from the left to the right. Then, we should start on the column of negative 7. This column or set starts from the left. If you check back our table, there's no critical number after negative 6. Thus, from the left up to negative 6, the notation will be parentheses, negative infinity, comma, negative 6, and closed parentheses. The notation of parentheses is always being used for describing infinity. The left start always means negative infinity while the right end always means positive infinity. Now, the critical number of negative 6 
which came from the numerator. Remember that negative 6 is not highlighted on our table. So, it must follow the rule if the symbol on the given is just greater or less than use parentheses. If the symbol has or equal or the underline use bracket. Since our given only has a greater than symbol, then we will use parentheses. So again, the notation of our first set is parentheses, negative infinity, comma, negative 6, and close parentheses. For the next set, it runs from negative 4 up to negative 2 which are both critical numbers of the denominator. That's why it's highlighted. The notation will be written as parentheses negative 4, comma negative 2, close parentheses. Critical numbers of the denominators always use parentheses regardless of what the inequality sign is. For the last set of answer, that's negative 2 up to the right end of the table. The notation will be parentheses negative 2, comma, positive infinity, close parentheses. Again, negative 2 is a critical from the denominator. That's why we used parentheses. And also on infinity, we used parentheses. After writing all notation of each answer, or sometimes called intervals, just combine it using the symbol of union, or letter U. Make sure you had written each notation on the right order. Now, this is our final answer.